morning, good morning. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Monday, Stevie. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, <laughs> good. For those of you who don't know, we are Ladies First. I'm Erica, and this is Stevie. And we talk about all kinds of events and everything yes. that's going on out there. Yes. So, how was your weekend? Tell me all about it. Oh my it. God. It's, it's so funny because I think I'm just in awe every time I get to speak somewhere because uh -huh. I remember working on the job I hated. So okay. anything I do entrepreneurial is, is a blessing, but this was truly a blessing. This mm -hmm. was like to be able to speak on Georgia State's campus, which is a awesome campus, mm -hmm. is huge, and to be able to speak for this particular event because um, I never wanted to be an author. Okay. okay. <laughs> that well, how did it fall into you then? If how did you become an author? Really, if for it, me, it God. Mm -hmm. To be honest, um, I when I first when I wrote cultivating your it factor, I actually was just finished a telesummit. I did. We mm -hmm. had like forty speakers, and I conducted that. And the I, somebody was like, you should do an anthology. And I was like, what? I, if I do a book, it's gonna be me. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was like, and during that time, it was around the time my grandmother had just passed, so I was writing a book, like most of the chapter in the in Cultivating Your Factor that I wrote was something that I already had written down. Mm -hmm. And so it just happened. I was like, okay, let's just try this. And so I tried it and it just really worked out. And so now, almost 10 books later, <laughs> it's still working out. Okay. But I always, I was thinking this weekend because I had a teacher um, you know, I grew up here and I often say I was the only African-American girl in many of my classes. Mm -hmm. I had a teacher who actually wanted me to be in speech therapy because she, mm -hmm. you know, um, to be honest, to keep it 100, she was a little bit racist. Okay. And so <laughs> she wanted me, I was excelling. Like my mother really did an excellent job in really preparing me for school. Mm -hmm. So I was excelling and she didn't like that. So mm. therefore, she was like, Stevie needs to be in speech therapy. Stevie needs to do this. Stevie Trying needs to, to hold you back. Absolutely. Right. And so my mom said, okay, you need to, all right. Well, let's talk to our first grade teacher. Mm -hmm. And because I did really well in first grade. And so they, she didn't want to do that. She didn't want to talk to a first grade teacher and the principal. Mm -hmm. So then it all stopped. So for me to be speaking on a university of that magnitude when people really told me you know, I couldn't, I shouldn't, I wouldn't, wasn't able to talk. Wow. It's just, it's amazing. So I'm already in awe. But isn't it. that one of the yeah. best feelings in the world when so many people come at you and say, you can't do this or you can't do that. And then when you do it, yes. that's a great feeling. Yes. It uh, really is. Yes. It's, it's amazing. So to go forth in that and to really be like, okay, let's let's see what this is all about. And then to do my talk, mm -hmm. which I had never spoken on that level before. It was a really truthful talk. I placed it on Facebook for anybody who wants to watch. But to do that, to speak on that stage, because at first I thought I was gonna be in this breakout room and right. they had me in auditorium, which was really cool. But to do that and then like to meet two women who like really were excited to meet me even my mom Aww. was like it was like you it was like a rock star moment mm -hmm. it really really was it was like a rock star moment where they're like stevie thank you it's like i know you get tired i know but keep doing this exactly. because you are helping so many of us so and i commend you for that Aww. because public speaking is like the hardest thing in the world to me to mm -hmm. just get out there and speak in front Aww. of people like i love putting the fashion shows together yes. right but to speak <laughs> yeah. i hate speaking in front of people yes. it's like can you do it can you <laughs> can you do it you know because that's just not my thing you do it every day though we do it every day <laughs> i think sometimes you know when you're behind a microphone mm -hmm. it is it is intimidating uh -huh. um i thank god again for my mom i was in charm school when uh -huh. i was little ballet uh -huh. always speaking every time i was speaking part so i was groomed to it and mm -hmm. then my mother is just she's an awesome sh shouts out to her because she sure drove Definitely. all the way to Shout atlanta to and all the way back <laughs> So it was just amazing. Then this morning, um, my manager, 
at the job I had before mm-hmm. I became an entrepreneur. Okay. She just was like, thank you for, for like being you now. And she, we just had an exchange and it was beautiful because she was the last person who I worked for, mm-hmm. you know, and it's to see this now and the last word she said to me, and that's why your word for just Stevie, metamorphosis is right. so important because she was like, butterfly, now it's time to spread your wings. Because mm-hmm. she always called me butterfly. So that, that whole metamorphosis thing is important to me. So definitely. That definitely. was that. It was amazing. All right. And yeah. Well, that's really awesome. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. We all are. Thank you we so much. Are. So yes, it's, it's truly a journey. <laughs> Absolutely. And we'll be right back, everybody. Crying Out, Separation Anxiety and a Soldier's Child by Chardonnay. Aid your child in coping with separation anxiety with the help of one mother's personal experience with her own child crying out as he dealt with separation anxiety. The author Chardonnay has been immersed in the military her whole entire adult life. After growing up in their small town, she left to join the army. It became her passport to the whole world. She spent six and a half years in the military and after her commitment, she's proud to call Virginia home. She's also a wife and the mother of the one who motivated this book. Get your copy today by going to www www.cryingout1.com Who is N. Wesley Pugsley Jr. and Associates CPA? We are a full-service CPA firm with over 25 years experience in audit, tax, bookkeeping, payroll, including direct deposits, setting a 501c3 nonprofit status, preparing loan packages, and much more. We have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. When I started in public accounting in the early 1980s, there were no computers or fax machines. Everything was face-to-face meetings. With the advent of computers, the internet, and cloud-based software, we could communicate with any client from anywhere in the country. With our portal technology, which is similar to online banking, you just sign into our secure website, upload your tax document, you scan to your C drive, and we prepare your return. It appears times are changing. I call this the year of enlightenment. Many Americans are seeing the advantages of supporting community-based businesses. We are here to serve you, not just because we're a community-based firm, but because we have the experience. We know we can serve your needs. matter because I'm always trying to find a way to help people, you know, if I'm not volunteering for an organization, I'm always trying to help my friends out with something, uh, you know, trying to improve their life, improve my own life, you know, I matter because I'm human, and who knows what I'm going to do in the future, so I might change something, you know, we don't know our own fate, so I think I matter. So I'm, that was great to hear about your yeah. weekend. That's awesome. Thank you. So what you missed here I was. Know. I missed all the fun. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> the street pub. They had oh. the street pub event. You know, the shoots puts that on every year. So, you know, I said Focus Radio, yeah. you know, besides you and a couple of other people, we volunteered That's there. That's awesome. So myself, my son, and Troy, got to bartend <laughs> at one right so we all got to bartend together oh, cool. which was great yes okay and then tommy was at a whole nother area <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen but we but we had a great great time we really did um it just you know i had no idea troy was going to be with us <laughs> right you know, me and Joe went there and we were like, well, can we find a spot where we can mm-hmm. do it together? Yeah. So the guy put us at, at one together. But um, we really had an amazing time. That's awesome. It got busy. You know, it had spurts where it wasn't so. But then when it got busy, it got busy. <laughs> I can imagine, like, you know, I've done that beer pour thing uh-huh. before. It's, it's I'm and it's, nobody <laughs> wants a foamy beer. No. No. They have to throw it out. Pour it. I'm like, listen, that's not. So I'm proud of y'all because that's not my, my forte. But he gave <laughs> Troy. They were like, people is loving his beer. Oh, I want you to pour. I want you to pour. I want you to pour. Because, you know, he just didn't get any foam in it at all. Okay. He, he was the bomb.com. So shout out to Troy. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. I think it takes patience. Oh, yeah. And I don't have much of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> the whole beer porn thing and then lines and, you know, it's, it's, it's intimidating to me. But it you can have, be. Yeah. It can be a little intimidating. But me, Troy, and Joe, we had a little system going on. So, it worked out. <laughs> okay. For us. All right. It really did. So, definitely. That was that was our weekend. Mm -hmm. We definitely did that. And that was from one to one to six when we volunteered. Okay. So it was hot. So y'all was out know? there for a little minute. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Joe and I came back here and, you know, just recouped and everything. But then we went back down. Oh, wow. We stayed down there till it closed. How long was it? Like the hours of it so it ended up being till about 10 30. okay mm -hmm. look at rhino go ahead y'all y'all gonna get it yeah <laughs> and vice um mayor joe cobb was down there volunteering he is know, awesome so shout out to him yes. and there were quite a few other people volunteering okay. they had about 200 wow volunteers down wow. there. wow so shout out to all the volunteers yes volunteering is great and it went for great causes mm -hmm. you know bradley free clinic mm -hmm. And a few other places, so that's super cool. That was really nice. Um, so let me tell you about this little article in Roanoke Times. Um, it looks like Roanoke is voted as one of the best places to live okay. in the outside um outside magazine or something like that i believe it called. and it has to do with the breweries mm -hmm. they're saying that roanoke is going to be one of the um hip cities for youngsters mm -hmm. roanoke takes outside seriously they do <laughs> listen and i i am not I am not the let's go outside and camp. I am not that chick, right. but <laughs> you do have to. I've been outside more in this city than I've ever been. Exactly. And so Roanoke, I could definitely see that because it is. It's the city where you just you have to be outside. You have to do it. So what it was named was one of the smartest towns in the best places to live issue that was released this past Tuesday. Mm hmm. Um, in previous years, the magazine has included cities in a list and written blurbs about each one. However, this year, Outside came up with a narrative of six habits of successful cities and wrote about places that displayed those traits. And Roanoke was one of them. Um, they're saying craft breweries inject culture, youth, and cash into communities. Yeah. What do you think about that? I definitely believe it and I definitely am like I am for it. I'm for the cash and the community mm. and what was the other thing? The culture? Culture. culture. Yes. Yeah, see Culture is important. It is. You have to have a culture. Like mm -hmm. you have to have company culture, you have to have um a community culture. You have to have these things. It's extremely important because mm -hmm. that gives your your place a platform. Really. Mm. It gives your like a vibe. Right. And so when you are in that whole standpoint of having that, it makes a name for your city. And then the cash, hey, listen, <laughs> you cannot do very much in this American society without cash. No, you definitely. Either your cannot. cash or somebody else's cash. You can't. It's not, <laughs> I believe, in LPM, other people's money. Yes. But <laughs> that's and that's another thing that happened this weekend. Um, 2011, my first business event ever was Beauty From Head to Toe tour. And I got to see one of the ladies who invested in me before I even had a brand, even had any of that. She invested her money, her time, her talent, her prayers, everything in helping me to launch that. So I got oh, wow. to see her and it was really cool. And just, you know, I'm very grateful for the people who before this was even, before there was any evidence mm -hmm. of me knowing what I was doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> they sent their money. And I appreciate it. So I got to see Regina Robinson, who was doing amazing things in Atlanta. So that was another thing. But cash is truly the culture driver. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and to all my animal lovers out there, especially doggy lovers, right? I'm an animal lover. Like, I have two dogs in New Jersey. I have a pug and a Japanese chin. And if they were here, they would just love to hear this <laughs> right now. But... 
There's a dog bakery that opened in downtown Roanoke. Just opened. Okay. It's called Unleashed and it offers a wealth of baked treats and snacks for dogs. It also sells leashes, cards, and other dog care related items. So I can't wait to go down there and visit that. It's at 131 Campbell Avenue. I like so, that name. I do too. I can't wait to see that. And yes. I think I'm gonna invite them on our show. Absolutely. Absolutely. On that note, we will be right back. Have you ever asked yourself, how do I show up in the world? How do I leave my mark? How do I get up every day and be the best I can be? It all starts with a mindset. The mindset to keep pushing through all adversity, to wear the titles of confident, self-reliant, and eternally beautiful. It all starts from within. Think. Feel. Be. The Bradley Free Clinic provides free, compassionate, and high-quality medical, dental, pharmaceutical, and preventative health care services for Roanoke Valley residents who lack the resources necessary to maintain their health and productivity using volunteer health care professionals. Check them out on their website at bradleyfreeclinic.com. Faith for a Cure has a fourfold mission rooted in the cure. We care about the cause. We unite people with people. We partner with researchers in order to provide the most current information for persons living with sickle cell anemia in order to educate and spread awareness about this disease. Learn more about sickle cell anemia at www.faithforacure.org. All right, all right, all right. So yes, that, you know, I um, wanted to say about the Unleashed Spot and spots like that, that success leaves clues. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So that's a cash connection. People love their dogs. People they do. love <laughs> dogs. Like my animals are my family. Yes. People just don't understand yes. that. Some people look at you like, just a, you know, but I love my animals. Yes, yes. And I, they love me. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. They love me. Yes. I love them. And that's just like coffee. I am not a coffee drinker uh -huh. by any means because, you know, I just don't drink it. But people, I used to be, in a, distrib um, be a distributor for a company that distributed mm -hmm. healthy coffee. Mm -hmm. And I did that because I understand money. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand your ha people's habits. That's mm -hmm. a habit mm -hmm. that get me paid. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's like, you got to understand where the money lies. And I appreciate the fact that they took that risk and opened that up. Absolutely. And I'm sure they'll do great down there. Yeah. Because there are a lot of pet owners downtown mm -hmm. with those, you know, new apartments and mm -hmm. everything. And that goes with the outside thing, too. Absolutely. That was smart. A lot what of people have dogs. But speaking of cash, this is something that kind of disappoints me. Uh, black home ownership is stuck near 30-year lows. Mm. That is not good because home ownership is what can help you do other dreams that you may mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take from equity, borrow your equity and, you know, put your child through college mm -hmm. or start a business or buy another mm -hmm. property. There are so many different things you can do with equity. And the fact that black home, or home ownership is kind of at a low it doesn't give them the option to do those things. Mm -hmm. And um, what I'm reading is because a lot of houses, it says there aren't many homes in areas that fall into price ranges of 200,000 or less. Um, here there are, however, Roanoke, unfortunately to me has always been more of a renter's town mm -hmm. probably because it's transient i don't think people stay here like like 
I think they do. If you people if do you stay are, here to put their kids through yeah, school. Yeah, if you were raised here, because right. I know a lot of people who I know are not from here. Mm -hmm. So there, I think it's not a rooted city, and I think that it could be that way because. I'm big on this whole college town. Right. I where like Greensboro, people go to school and then decide they want to fall in love with the city and mm -hmm. stay there and mm -hmm. they buy homes. Right. So I think that it may not be something really holding them there unless you have roots. Like mm -hmm. for all of us here, we have our roots, roots. around up. Mm -hmm. But somebody who just comes here for a job mm -hmm. who doesn't have any roots is easy to be like, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to stay here or I, I want to go back home or whatever the case. But even with that being the case, Stevie, even if they do leave, you can rent your place out. You can resell it and mm -hmm. make some money. Because when you rent and you put that security deposit down, if you're lucky, you're getting it back. Mm -hmm. But if you bought a place for a year, you're getting that plus, you know, plus equity. Yeah. You know? So I think so Erica Kane exactly is the teacher of real estate course. And we're going to do real estate Wednesdays. You know, we're going <laughs> to have to do a real Listen, estate course. Because I think it'd be great because some people don't sad, know. Everybody. Yeah. That is sad, everybody. That is said. You need to purchase something. If you don't hear anything else that I said today, you need to hear that. Mm -hmm. It is important to purchase something. You have to. Do it for your kids if you have kids. That's something you can leave to them if you want to. Or you can put them through college or you can help them invest in their dreams or invest in your own dream. But it is important to have home ownership. It begins with home ownership. So please hear me when I say that. That's all I have to say on that note. I think it's great. People don't know. Like for me, I've always been like, I don't want to own a home. I want to like, because I don't want to have roots in any one place. Right. But what you're saying is important as I edge towards this this age okay as i is <laughs> towards this age i look at life a little bit differently so i would love for you to give like tips and what we can do and how we i think that would be awesome well sir cap has a program july 28th i believe you can contact lawan thomas regarding it okay but there is a first time home buyer program that saturday at sir cap you finish that program they do help you with a down payment so you definitely want to check into that. It is free. There is no charge. But find out all your options about purchasing a home. It is extremely important. This is unacceptable for black people. It should not be a 30 year low. So please get your credits right. Do what you have to do and try to own a home. We will be right back, everybody. Children of the Roanoke Valley just can't wait for the fun at Apple Ridge Farms Summer Academic Camp, all at no cost to qualifying children in underserved areas. This is where Apple Ridge Farm needs you. It costs $800 to send one kid to camp for three weeks. Help sponsor a child's unforgettable summer with memories to last a lifetime. Join us as we transform the lives of our community's underserved children. Visit AppleRidge.org and click on the donate button today. Apple Ridge Farm, serving the community since 1978. We're back, we're back, we're back. 
So, Stevie, who's in the room with us this morning? Let's see here. I see Keith pulling. Hey, Keith. Good morning, Keith. <laughs> I see my mom. Hey, Karen Mills. Good morning, Karen. I see Jeannie, your cousin. Oh, good morning, cousin. Let's see. Who else is here? I see Kat. Good morning, Kat. I can't wait to come to Farmer Guessa next week, the 24th. Focus Radio will be there. Absolutely. And I see Mike McGeorge. Hey. Hey, Mike. How y'all doing on today? This, this Monday we have right here. Yep. It is. It's a marvelous Monday, yes. right? We're not even going to make a negative out of Monday. You know how you wake yeah. up and you're like, oh, it's Monday. <laughs> but no, today is a marvelous day, beginning of another week. So. Absolutely. I think it's really about the um, giving yourself the courage and confidence to sign the permission slip to your ideal life. Because for me, now that I live the life that I live, Mondays aren't, Monday, any day is not bad. But mm -hmm. when I used to be on that job, honey, that I hate it. It was, I don't care what day, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Right. I had to work six days a week. Like Tomorrow, we're going to talk about why you hated your job so much. And there's other people out there that hate their job. Yes. So we need to come up we with do. something to help yeah. people get through who really hate their job. Yes. And give them other options. I'll provide so. some solutions. I'll do some homework for y'all tonight. <laughs> that's it. We, that's definitely true. a subject to talk yes. about. It, oh my God. Like, it was not, it wasn't a great place to be for me. Mm -hmm. But that was before I knew my it factor, which is a whole different subject. So I look forward to talking about that that's tomorrow. That's it. And you share your it factor with us every yeah. day. I'm <laughs> so you. proud of you. Oh, thank you. That's good. And you're about to turn 40. Yeah. You know your it factor. Yes. I'm like, that's now, awesome. look at go. The 30s, I started entrepreneurship in my 30s, like early 30s. Uh -huh. So that's all I knew for this decade. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, and I didn't know what entrepreneurship was. Mm -hmm. I had never, I saw my dad, but I thought, like, you would have to have a talent. Like my dad has been an entrepreneur all my life. And right. I, like, since he was like 13, 14 years old, they've been singing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't sing, mm -hmm. I don't play. Mm -hmm. what, no, I, what am I gonna do? And mm -hmm. I thought that, you know, because I had gone through school, I had to have these, I was optionless, mm -hmm. you know? Like the next logical thing is to get a job. And even now some people are like, Stevie, you have these degrees, why aren't you doing this, this, this? I'm like, because I know what that life looks like, and I don't want to. I don't want to go back to that. Understood. So, because you're you're following someone else's dream, not yours. Yep. So you have to look at it. Building like somebody that. else's mansion. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So cultivating your it factor is extremely important. It if is. you haven't got Stevie's book, get get her book. Reach out to her and get her book about Thank the it factor. You. So. Your final thoughts for the day? I look forward to tomorrow. I'm gonna be real transparent about some things tomorrow. Not that I'm not transparent <laughs> every day, but you know, I feel like it's time to go a little deeper in that story and in that message. And so I pray that you all are here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, invite your friends, it's gonna be good. Make it a great day, do not have a great day. Make it a great day, why? Because you, 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 and yes, you too have the power to do so. Yes. Bye for now. That's awesome, 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 awesome. Marvelous Monday, everybody. Get your credits right. Go out there and invest in yourself. Buy a home, please. I cannot stress the importance of that. If you haven't purchased a home yet, please work on purchasing a home it actually can be cheaper than renting mm -hmm. so definitely look into it contact sircap regarding the program mm -hmm. um it is a first time home buyers program saturday july 28th you can reach out to lawan thomas and she will tell you all about it they do have grants and everything as down payments once you do complete the program so reach out to her Shout out to Roanoke, shout out to Philly, shout out to Jersey. And if your birthday is today, happy birthday to you. Until tomorrow, everybody, God bless.
healthy food for healthier communities. In partnership with Focus Radio and Apple Ridge Farm, the Well Market is a youth-run farm stand providing healthy, local, organic produce to people living in the Northwest Gainesboro neighborhood. Fruits and vegetables such as greens, potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, and squash are harvested from the George Washington Carver Community Garden in Northwest Roanoke and local farms in Floyd County including Patchwork, Green Island, and Apple Ridge Farm. Money raised from produce sales goes directly back into the program and continues to fund youth involvement and entrepreneurial skill development. Please visit the Well Market every Saturday from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. and help support healthy food for healthier communities. The Well, working, eating, living, and learning together.